Escape from Evil by Ernest Becker Culture itself is sacred, since it is the religion that assures in some way the perpetuation of its members. Man expands his organization in complexity by games, puzzles, riddles, mental tricks of all types, by boasting about his achievements, taunting and humiliating his adversaries, or torturing and killing them. Anything that reduces the other organisms and adds to one's own size and importance is a direct way to gain self-feeling. Envy is the signal of danger that the organism sends to itself when a shadow is being cast over it, when it is threatened with being diminished. Status forcing and similar kind of behavior, are when people try to come out of the social encounters a little bigger than they went in, by playing intricate games of one-upmanship. Society almost everywhere provides codes for self-aggrandizement, for the ability to boast, to humiliate, or just simply outshine in quiet ways, like displaying one's superior achievements. Social life is interwoven with salutations for greeting and taking leave, for acknowledging others with short, standardized conversations which reinforce the sense of well-being of all the members. If rituals generate and redistribute life power, then each person is a generator of life. That is how important a person could feel, within the ritualistic view of nature, by occupying a ritual place in community. Magic is a religion we don't believe in and religion is magic we believe in. What Huizinga did in Homo Ludens was to show that primitive life was basically a rich and playful dramatization of life. Primitive man acted out his significance as living creature and as a lord over other creatures. Primitive man set up his society as a stage, surrounded himself with actors to play different roles, invented gods to address the performances too, and then ran off one ritual drama after the other, raising himself to the stars and bringing the stars down into the affairs of men. He staged the dance of life, with himself in the center. Our own everyday rituals seem shallow precisely because they lack the cosmic connection. Instead of using one's fellow man as a mirror to make one's face shine, the primitive used the whole cosmos. Man humanizes the cosmos by projecting all imaginable earthly things onto heavens, in this way again intertwining his own destiny with the immortal stars. Man has always treated with consideration and respect those parts of the natural world over which he has no control. As soon as he was sure of his powers, his respect for the mystery of what he faced diminished. The original sacrifice is always food, because this is what one wants from the gods as the basis for life. Society in other words, is a dramatization of dependence and an exercise in mutual safety by the one animal in evolution who had to figure out a way of appeasing himself as well as nature. Fruit salad on the chest of today's military men is a direct descendant of this public announcement of, see who I am, because of where I have been, and what I have done, look how accomplished I am as a death dealer and death defier. Primitive man recognized, differences in talents and merit and already deferred to them somewhat, granted them special privileges. Why? Because obviously these qualities helped, to secure life, to assure the perpetuation of the tribe. Exploits in the danger of hunting and war were especially crucial. Each organism is in a struggle for more life and tries to expand and aggrandize itself as much as possible. 
and the most immediate way to do this is in one's immediate social vis-a-vis others. Why did people go from an economy of simple sharing among equals to one of pooling via an authority figure who has a high rank and absolute power? The answer is that man wanted a visible God always present to receive offerings, and for this he was willing to pay the price of his own subjection. Once man got enough power over the world to forego the old totemic ritual identification, he became more and more eager to disclaim any relationship with animals. If your adversity wins the argument about truth, you die. Your immortality system has been shown to be fallible, your life become fallible. History, then, can be understood as the succession of ideologies that console for death. Rank argued that all taboos, morals, customs, and laws represent a self-limitation of man so that he could transcend his condition, get more by denying life. One reason why primitives handled their children so gently, the child was actually in the process of giving birth to himself with the help of ancestral spirit. If one was mean to him, the spirit might be upset, and withdraw from this world. Under the ideology of the patriarchal family, the child becomes the individual successor to his father, then merely the son of the father, and is no longer the independent mediator of spirits from the ancestral world. With the gradual development of specialized ritualists and priests, the power to create power, often fell to a special class and no longer was in the possession of the whole collectivity. Where this happened, it helped to turn the average man into impotent subject. Money provides a fixed, external, recognizable sign for what would be confused, contractable operations. Ritual makes visible external signs of internal states. Money mediates transactions, rituals mediate experience, including social experience. Money provides a standard for measuring worth, rituals standardizes situations, and so helps to evaluate them. Money negotiates immortality and therefore is God. Missionary activities has gone hand in hand with superior weapons and medicines because the priests have always known that they have to prove that their god represents superior powers. Money gives power now and, through the accumulated property, land, and interest, power in the future. Man has become dependent on social symbols of prestige, that single him out as especially worthy of being remembered in the eyes of the gods, and in the minds of men. Sin is the experience of uncertainty in one's relation to the divine ground of his being, he no longer is sure of possessing the right connection, the right means of expiation. He feels alone, exposed, weighted down by the burden of guilt accumulated in this world by the acts of his body and his material desires. This is one way to understand the greater aggressiveness of man than of other animals, he was the only animal conscious of death and decay, and so he engaged in the heightened for powers of self-perpetuation. Life on primitive levels could be monotonous, and warfare was often the main source of new experience, travel, real stimulation. Today we are living in grotesque spectacle of the poisoning of the earth by the 19th century hero system of unrestrained material production. This is perhaps the greatest and most pervasive evil to have emerged in all of history, and it may even eventually defeat all of mankind. The free flow of criticism, satire, art and science, is a continuous attack on the cultural fiction, which is why totalitarians, from Plato to Mao, have to control these things, as has long been known.